Eric Kamaid Freixas is a federal interpreter who helped translate for the cases of nearly 400 illegal immigrants arrested in May at an Iowa meatpacking plant. It was the largest criminal enforcement operation ever carried out by immigration authorities at a workplace. Mr. Kamaid Freixas is speaking publicly for the first time about his experience. What was striking was uh, to, to see these people enter and basically, you know, they're shackled at their feet, at their wrists, and their wrists are, are shackled to their waist. It's all chains. And uh, so they can only take a few little steps, very short little steps, uh, and the chains are dragging on the floor. So it makes a terrible impression. Then you see that they are all about five feet tall. And, um, and you start, when they start calling their name, you start recognizing Mayan names, uh, last names. Uh, so the, there was a, a real racial contrast between the um, detainees in chains and the rest of the court um, with its grandeur. They were being charged, well, with uh, social security fraud, using a false social security number. But what struck me was that they were also being charged with um, aggravated identity theft. And uh, that just seemed awkward. It, it didn't fit. Many of the um, uh, people we interviewed um, didn't know what a social security number was or what it's used for. And um, they, you could tell they were telling the truth because they would say it with shame, you know, like they didn't want to appear ignorant. Um, but uh, you would ask them, what is this number here? I don't know. And who put it there? Well, I, at the factory, they, at the plant, they just filled it out for me because, you know, I, I, I just don't know the language. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, many of them uh, couldn't read or write Spanish, let alone English. So, um, and one of the elements of the offense of social security fraud is knowingly. Um, so it, there was a, a pretty good indication that um, many of them were actually not guilty. Uh, yet they had no choice but to plead out. You know, it's an uncomfortable situation because we are not supposed to show any emotion or any um, indication of preference or favoritism or bias. Uh, and we're not supposed to be commenting uh, what's going on. So everybody was going about their business. Everybody was doing their duty. But there was a somber aspect to it, a, a certain... Um, uh, heavy-heartedness. After the arraignments, the initial appearances, they were sent to uh, jail. Um, we went with the defense attorneys to meet individually with them in, in jail and explain the plea agreement that the government was offering. It worked like this, basically. If you plead guilty to using, knowingly using a full social security number, the government will withdraw the heavier charge of identity theft and you would have to serve five months in jail before being deported. If you pleaded not guilty, it could take six to eight months waiting for a trial. And since these people were under an immigration detainer, they have no right of bail. So basically, even if they felt they were not guilty, they, uh, if they pleaded not guilty, it meant waiting six to eight months in jail for a trial. And then um, a trial, they always stood the risk of losing. And then if they lost, they were facing at a minimum of two years in prison. They were begging to be deported. They had families, uh, whether in Iowa or many of them back in their countries, who depended on them. They, they were the sole earners. 
I remember one case, it was a 19-year-old um, uh, young man. Uh, he was the only one in his family who got sent out to work. He was the only provider for his family. His parents were too old to work, so they sent him um, to basically risk it and, and get across the border and, and so forth. So he was worried sick. I don't want it happening again. I don't want it to happen again. As a, as a citizen, uh, I have the right of speech, which I think takes precedence over everything else. And um, so far, my colleagues have supported me, um, and I hope that uh, many other people will as well. I have tremendous respect for the men and women of immigration and customs enforcement. These people do you know, a, a very honorable job. Um, they are my colleagues when I'm in the legal system. They are my co-workers. They're doing their job. And the problem is, like many people have said, our system is broken. Well, in this case, th these agencies have been given way too much power by Congress. Uh, a power that was designed to fight the war on terror and which now they are using to fight the war on illegal immigration.